in decision making we as i am the president of my club uh, women they don't want to come forward because of the family members some of the people they stop their families not to go there in there so it is very really hard to bring them up uh, the barriers is the culture and uh, also uh, the education of the women the barriers could be the family at home if uh, the husband is not supporting the the, the wife or if the the women are not having more cap capacity in them yes in my community the the main barrier we're facing, like uh, it is a traditional culture for ladies, for women not to talk during the meeting, and it has been we face that barrier. But um, since they've seen that we have been uh, working together, we form a women's group and we work together, and we're taking things up to district level. From there, then they tend to know that yes, it is uh, time for them to to hear views from us women as well. So one of the barriers we're facing is that, but right now we are tending to be heard as well, to have time in a meeting. During the meeting we were given time to talk in the meeting. So time changes and uh, it changes as well. One of the barriers is that because women are not included, we are not, uh, some, uh, some of the way the men think of us that we are not capable enough to doing that. But for me, I see if we include all women, there's a change. Some of the barriers would still be, if I could speak from uh, the perspective of a young woman with disability, it would be the disability that a woman with disability has, that would be a barrier, sort of like an attitudinal barrier from within the community that actually limits a woman with disability from participating within a community and being able to be that positive contributor to the community. Not only the attitudinal barriers, it could be the physical barriers and when we talk about physical barriers I could say that if it's a woman with, um, who is a wheelchair user when the environment is not disability friendly, that could also be a barrier to a woman with disability or a woman that's blind and the environment is not disabled friendly to that woman who is blind, it could also become another barrier to that blind woman from participating within a community. We have attitudinal barriers, those physical barriers as well as the barriers that uh, women face from um, women actually face when it comes to accessing the basic things that uh, the basic needs that they need and these basic needs when you don't when women when women with disabilities don't access these basic needs they actually limit it actually limits the participation as well barriers we are not given the leeway to talk in certain cases so and uh, women tend to be at home looking after the safety of the environment and at home we are not we are confined to home uh, so that becomes one of the barriers i think one of the barriers is for us as women is maybe one is the empowerment level i feel that some women and some of us are developing uh, our capacity as well as empowering ourselves uh, because sometimes when we are at most time when we are well uh, empowered we are confident to speak and address the issues the way we we are facing it as well as i think cultural norms are still a barrier as well as patriarchy still a barrier there still needs to be a lot of, of women taking ownership of available services, available opportunities. So at one stage too, I think that we also need to come out and take ownership of what's uh, available to us.